Welcome to Disrupting Japan, straight talk from Japan's most successful entrepreneurs. I'm Tim Romero, and thanks for joining me. Today we sit down with Naoki Yamada of Enidor.、Um, we talk about how、uh, international adventure and his love for a particular anime character led him to create a crowdsourced translation platform. We talk about the competitive nature of online translation, VC funding in Japan, some of the incubator programs here, and the changing way that Japanese young people are looking at failure these days.、Um, <laughs> and somehow at the end of the interview, he manages to turn the mic back on me, and we,、uh, we talk about trying to maintain a work life balance in Japan, which is something that's, that's pretty hard for all generations here. So I think you'll enjoy this one. So here we go. I'm here with Naoki Yamada, founder and CEO of Enidor, who's introduced the Cognac c- crowd translation platform. And instead of having me like, stumble all over this,、okay. <laughs> why, why don't you explain to, to everyone what exactly Cognac does? Okay,、um, basically, we are doing the crowdsourcing based translation, which is、um, we gather a bunch of translators on our platform. and... If someone wants to have a translation, they just upload their text or whatever they want to translate onto our、uh, platform. And someone who can do the translation work for the、um, tasks they need to, and they are going to get paid for the, for the jobs they do. Okay. Tell me a bit about your users. Is it mainly、mm-hmm. uh, business focus、uh-huh. or consumer focus? We started our company in 2009.、Right. And since Um, then we were focused on cons- consumer side, like、um, people who want s to translate their emails or letters. But、um, we had a hard time finding those people. So we、oh. um, switched our business from consumer to、um, business side、um, last year. So you, you changed from a consumer focus to a more business focus about the same time you were raising. Raising funds.、Yeah. Is that just a coincidence or was there, was it, were the、uh, investors kind of pushing you to be more of a business focus?、Um, basically, we decided to、uh, switch our business to the business side.、Um, we looked at our、um, user basis and analyzed it and f- found out that our users are using our translation service for their businesses.、Oh, okay. So that's, that's the reason we switched it. So, you made the change, and it just so happened the, your investors thought it was a good idea, too. <laughs> <laughs> That is also true. <laughs> okay. Yeah.、Um, actually, I have to ask you this.、Mm-hmm. Is, is Cognac really named after the Doraemon、mm, yeah. anime? It is? Okay.、Yeah. I、It's, kind of suspected that.、Mm-hmm. And also, the name of the company is from、uh, Doraemon, too, called、uh, Anywhere Door. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, okay. And for, for our foreign. Our、oh, foreign、yeah. listeners, we should probably explain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Doraemon is a, a much loved Japanese anime about a robot cat. Yeah.、Uh, go to YouTube and, and waste hours because it's just adorable. And so, Konyak, the,、uh-huh. the Honyaku, Konyaku, right? Yeah. It was, how are we going to translate that? <laughs> You're the translation. <laughs> oh, yeah,、expert. right.、Um, how would you translate it? Doraemon was remade in, in the States this year. And the name of that Honyak Konyak is a translation gumi. Translation gumi. Yeah. Okay. So if you eat it, you can speak any kind of languages you want. Excellent.、Yeah. The online translation,、mm-hmm. and especially like cloud sourced、yes. translation, it's a really competitive space. That's true. So, what, what is, is different about Konyak from、mm-hmm. all the other companies?、Um, first of all, we don't do the testing for the translators at first, first place. Because、um, we want to welcome all the people who want to be a translator. Instead, so, so, how, how do you evaluate the quality of the translators? Yeah, that's, that's the key point.、Um, after we welcome those translators in, on our platform, we ask them to translate all the contents on the platform who,、uh, from the consumer.、Um, and after doing the translations, the translation results are evaluated by. The other translators. So, the, the, you're crowdsourcing not only the translation,、mm-hmm. but the evaluation of yeah, the translators. That's true. How, isn't, there,、um, isn't there an incentive for the translators、mm-hmm. to say, no, everyone else is terrible, to, to <laughs>、yeah. get their own profits up? Some of, some of them, yeah, do it. But、um, 
those evaluations are also evaluated from the other translators. <laughs> oh, wow. So okay. yeah, that's... <laughs> it's just one more layer yeah. of meta analysis. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So that's that's a key part of our business. Okay. And and also we are trying to um, trying to be more um, translator f- friendly platform. We want to make our tran- translation platform to become more like open platform, which is anyone can join. But if they want to become an expert, they have to work harder than the other translators. So, so how would one become an mm-hmm. expert? Just translate more documents or get higher, higher ratings? Yes, and also we, we now have the test exams to the translators who wants to be an expert translators. So we also have the, the test as well as the, the evaluation system. Oh, okay. So it's a two-stage. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So is most of your translation English and Japanese, mm-hmm. or do you do other languages as well? Um, basically, English to Japanese is the, the biggest uh, market right now on our platform, but um, many Chinese to English translations and also Southeast Asian languages are getting popular. Okay. So crowdsource translation, as we were saying, it's a really competitive and yes. dynamic market. What is the what's what is the biggest challenge mm-hmm. for the market as a whole in mm-hmm. Japan over the next couple of years? Well, we are getting many, many um clients right now because of the 2020 Olympic Games. Oh, of course. In Tokyo. Uh, many companies and also the business entities trying to, need, needs to translate their, their home pages and also their contents into English and also other languages right now. So there, are big, big, there will be a bigger market in the next couple of years. Okay. So it sounds like the demand side is, is getting taken care of. Yeah, right. So are you focusing on a particular niche of mm-hmm. customers? Mm-hmm. Are you focusing particularly on, say, e-commerce? Or are you, uh, are you going more wide with lots of different types of customers? Since last year, after we switched our business to the, the business side, we are getting many clients who need translation for their games, social games, and also oh. um, e-commerce um, platforms. So we have so many um, clients in those categories. But I think there should be more, more needs for translation in other um, categories as well. Okay, on, a, on kind of a personal level, mm-hmm. you spent like a month or so driving around America and, and oh, yeah. tra- traveling around <laughs> Europe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Did, did that experience traveling kind of, can, did that sort of put the idea of your he- in your head about doing a translation company or, or working an in international? Telling about myself, I went to school in Long Beach in California and I studied entrepreneurship management there. Really? Which is, which is quite unique. Major. What, what is entrepreneur management? It sounds like almost <laughs> a contradiction. <laughs> um, it's, it's more like um, studying about what the entrepreneurship is and also how to manage the company in a small group of people. Oh, so entrepreneur management, entrepreneur management is how it's management for entrepreneurs, not yes. management of Entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Management for you. Yeah, that, that, that makes yeah. more sense. It's <laughs> mm. and, so, and oh, I studied yeah, that? I studied there. And after studying um that that kind of stuff, I went back to Japan and worked for a, a big company, NTT. And I felt like, you know, I was like um I felt like I should be um in the other companies, which is um, more global, <laughs> but um, in, well, let, let's uh, let me ask you about that because mm. I mean I've worked in mm-hmm. some very big Japanese company. Mm-hmm. My first job here was working at Fujitsu. Okay, yeah, it's another big one. Uh-huh. Um, so, so what about it? Mm-hmm. You know, what specifically made you say I've I've got to get out of here? I've got to do something else. 
I actually want to, wanted to learn more about Japanese、um, management system in Japanese companies. But those companies are too domestic for me to think of other stuff. So,、um, many of my co workers want me to do the translations while I was working there. But、like, you were working there as an engineer? Engineer, yes. Yeah. So, that's, that's、uh, typical. It was, it was quite frustrating. Once they find out you speak English, y e s t all <laughs>、yes. this translation and. Yeah. yeah. And that company didn't have the translators on house. So, it was quite hard to find.、Um, The, the other source to do the translations. So I was the only one doing that. And was, But, that, the, was that the core of your idea of、um, there's got to be some way we can get this done? Yeah. That I、right. don't have to do it. <laughs> And there, there should be somebody who is better than I do the translation. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a key part of、um, doing this, doing this, this business. Are, are they one of your customers now? Uh, no, we. <laughs>、oh, that's too bad. Yeah, but, uh, but, but uh, we are talking right now. NTT, I mean,、mm-hmm. it's a big Japanese yeah, company.、Right. It, it takes time to sell、mm-hmm. those guys. Yeah, right. But once you do, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, right, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, traveling around the US and also Europe、um, helped me thinking of a good、um, business idea because、uh, I need to drive like hundreds, hundreds of miles every day and had, had so many. Um, time to think about. And just、uh, by yourself? Yeah, right, by myself. Yeah, nothing、so. to do but think.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you find most challenging or frustrating about being an entrepreneur? Well, tearing, well, tearing the imaginations and also the visions in my mind to the other people is the hardest part. I, I know what I want to do, and I think I can tell, but it's hard to be understood. Mm-hmm. By most people. So, to get it out of your head onto、mm. paper or、mm. onto. Yeah, right. That's interesting. So, for the first couple of years, I couldn't do it. So, I couldn't find a good、um, people who want to join our company. But right now, we are getting many、um, fellow people right well, you now. You seem to be growing really quickly. How, how many staff do you have now?、Uh, over 20 people. Yeah, wow. But since, since last year, Until we switched our business, we had only two members, me and my, with my co founder. It sounds like that was a good switch to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the importance of pivoting. Yeah, right. <laughs>、um, up until now,、mm. what's been the biggest challenge you faced? Was it, was it finding that right target audience, the, the, the business versus consumer? Was、mm-hmm. it personal? Was it you know, people you worked with? Fundraising,、mm. anything. Most of the stuff was very, very hard because it was the first time for me to do everything, right? But the hardest part was、um, first year, I didn't know how to market our business to、um, mass people who, who are supposed to, to have a demand for translations. So the, the marketing side, the、yes. promotion side was the hardest. Yes. Yes, how do、so、you, you overcome it? How do you fix it?、Um, I'm still, still, <laughs> still trying, trying to, to fix find. it.、Yeah, that's, that's a great answer.、Yeah. I mean, in fact, I think that's probably the best answer.、Yeah. Um, you know, no matter how successful you are, you should always be trying to fix、yeah. it, right? That's great. And,、um, yeah, after business are getting to grow, the way of marketing is going to change as well. Right. So it's, it's, it's a kind of journey to find out. The best way all the time. Sure. Bigger campaigns, bigger、yes. budgets, bigger problems. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things I, I find really interesting is that in Japan, so the image that Japanese have about startups and entrepreneurships has really, really changed in the、mm-hmm. last 10 or 15 years, where it, it's gone from being just something people didn't do、mm-hmm. to being very fashionable and trendy. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions people、mm-hmm. have? What are some of the biggest misconceptions Japanese people have about starting a company?、Um, I think most of, the, most of the people in Japan 
think starting starting up a company is is a risk. Like um, you people think you cannot start up company without、um, borrowing money from the other people or from bank. A very traditional way. Yes. Yeah.、Um, people don't know how to raise money, and also, I think it is it is kind of cultural thing. Cultural in what way?、Um, people are more conservative in Japan. People think working for a big company is stable, and there's no risk to work there.、Uh-huh. But、um, I think the time is changing and. Um, working for the big company is is still a risk risk to do. I think so too. I mean, even the big companies are laying off workers yeah, here、right. in Japan.、Mm. And, It didn't you know, happen twenty years ago. Yeah, that、right. would never happen. <laughs> so yeah, everywhere is a risk.、Mm. I've noticed because I do a lot of teaching and, and mentoring in、mm-hmm. Japan, and a lot of especially college age、mm-hmm. students they've they've seen the social network. <laughs> no, they've、uh, <laughs> yeah right yeah、The、movie right <laughs> yeah exactly and, and they say they want to be an entrepreneur they say、mm-hmm. they they want to start a company、uh-huh. but they don't well you know they're college kids so they don't really know but what advice would you tell them、mm-hmm. for for people who want to start a company in Japan、um, when you are in your twenties you can do anything and there's no risk. Because you probably don't have a family to take care. True. If you are in thirties,、um, you may have to care about your families. But、um, it's good to start up a company, and it, it's there sh- should be a chance to be a be a millionaire or <laughs> <laughs> or or it richer than you work for a company, and you may be able to you may be able to. Achieve something that you you've ne- never imagined. It's it's not a good phrase, but you you have a power to change the world, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> If you can start up a company, so you really encourage everyone to just try it. Try it in their twenties.、Mm-hmm. Try it as soon as possible. Yeah, if you are twenties. Yeah. <laughs>、um, but many but- many many of the entrepreneurs who succeed their business. Says, if you start up company for the for your second time, the risk of becoming a bankrupt is less than the first time. I think that's true.、Mm. But now this is interesting. Now maybe this has changed. For example, in America, investors tend to respect founders who have failed、mm. once or twice、yeah. for that experience. In Japan, do you feel investors respect failure, or are they scared off by failure? Depends on their. Investors, like、um, for example, our independent investors tend to think that failure is a good thing. Right. Like like new coming, you know, investors. But、um, the traditional investors thinks it the failure is a bad thing,、yeah. and they won't probably invest again to the the failed、um, entrepreneurs. Well, in, in and again for for our listeners outside Japan. <laughs> In Japanese society, failure was a well. It still is largely.、Mm. It's a very serious, shameful thing to have、mm-hmm. failed, whether it's in、uh, high school exams、mm-hmm. or business or sports or anything. Really,、mm-hmm. I'm glad to hear it's starting to change slowly. Yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> very slowly. Yeah, slowly, but it's changing. That's good.、Um, you went through.、Um, The Samurai Incubate、yes. um, Accelerator Program here、mm. in Japan. Would you recommend that that other other founders go through an incubator program or in Japan? In Japan, I think it's good and bad. Good part is、um, you can have a good mentor、mm. if they are good incubator, and you can get a connection with other startups. But bad part is. Also, the the connection with the other startups. If they didn't grow fast, you think you are okay with that? <laughs> oh, okay. So it's it's so, quite quite a mental stuff, I think. So yeah, you end up. It's who you compare yourself to. Yes. Ah, interesting.、Mm. Okay. So yeah, that's a that's a that's a good part and bad part. And also,、uh, 
uh, you have to find out who is the, the good mentor and bad mentor for you. How, how do you do that in advance? From the critics from the other startups, I think. Oh, okay. So for translation, you're working with a lot of foreign companies as well. What do you think foreigners don't understand about, the Japanese, about Japanese startups? Last couple of years, many investors are investing so much money into Japanese startups, in ja- Japanese, Japanese investors. Okay. Like, um, for example, four years ago, when I was trying to raise money in Japan, it was hard to f- raise over $1 million. Right, right. But recently, many startups are investing, getting investments over $5 million. That is quite a change, isn't it? Yeah, that's a that's a big change. And these are pretty early stage companies too. Yeah, like they are starting starting up a company in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. We we don't want to mention any names, but there, <laughs> there, there's been a couple of announcements where it's like, really, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're not. <laughs> it's a it's a kind of bubble, so yeah. it's it's quite scary. <laughs> well, I think yeah, things are getting a bit bubbly here. Mm. But one thing I noticed is that. So I was here for the first internet bubble in 2000. Mm. And back then, there was a lot of money that was going into very few companies. Okay. And right now, there's, there's probably more money, but there are much smaller investments being made into many, many more companies. Mm. And it seems to be much healthier. Yeah, that's true. Um, when I went to Silicon Valley, I felt like um, there's a solid ecosystem there. Yeah, but in Japan, the connection between startups and also investors are are still weaker than the states. What, what do you mean weaker? I mean, um, most of the startup companies doesn't know much about um, Japanese investors, and uh-huh. also uh, also other other startups. Uh, when you go to the startup event, you know people who are there, but. There should be more more startups in Japan. Uh, who is not under the gun? <laughs> I mean, so more. Um, so do you think there are a lot of startups that are um, not found out that that are like in stealth mode? Mm. Are they trying to be in stealth mode, or just people don't know about them yet? I think people don't know about it because um, when I went to um, the other side of Japan, I felt like I don't know anything about the startups there. Well, let me ask you this. If I gave you like a magic wand Mm -hmm. and said, you know, if there's one thing you could change or fix about Japan to make it better for startups, what would it be? If I can change the legal stuff, I think it's it's a it's a hardest part to do a unique startups. Like, you know, for example, it's quite hard to change the financial regulations in Japan. For example, PayPal couldn't start up their branch in Tokyo so they have their office in Singapore and well they do so have an office in PayPal Tokyo. is operating out of Sing- PayPal Japan is operating out of Singapore in I Singapore, didn't know yes. that oh, okay mm. well yeah financial regulations are mm. pretty tight here yeah and also mm, regulations it's changing right now but um, it, it is still hard to hard to manage yeah yeah regulations do you have any problems with larger Japanese companies being willing to work with small startups? Uh, it's changing right now. Many, yeah. many of the, the big companies are trying to, to have a business with startups, but it takes time. For like, <laughs> if, if we want to have the partnership with the big company, it usually takes uh, more than six months. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you know, and a company can be out of business in six yeah, right. months. <laughs> Uh, wow. Yeah, that's true. But but it's changing. We can have a partnership right now with the big companies. That's it, cool. it didn't happen. It didn't happen five years ago. No. Mm. But that is good. I mean, the more people I talk to, the more startup founders I talk to, mm-hmm. the more optimistic I become about Japan. Because all of these things that drove me crazy for the last 20 years, people mm-hmm. are like, no, it's getting better. Bigger companies are... It's not easy to work with startups, but... Bigger companies are more willing to take a look at comfort, small, small startups. Yeah, That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And there are so many um, events and meetups 
which um, accelerate the connection between um, big companies and startups. So do you have plans to expand overseas? Uh, we actually have an office in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So yeah. sales and marketing. Yeah. yeah. And also we thinking to expand our business into Singapore. A lot of Japanese startups are doing business with Singapore. Because mm-hmm. it's a quite, um, quite a good place to expand the business from Singapore to Indonesia and also other Southeast Asian countries. Yes, Singapore really is kind of the key to Southeast mm-hmm. Asia. Yes, but the toughest part is the price of everything is getting, getting very, very high in Singapore. Um, wow, this is great. Is, is there anything else you want to talk about? I want to know more about how to manage startups and also the family. Um, like, for example, um, the, the examples from the States and also the other countries. Because um, like how to balance work yes. life and home life. Yes, that is challenging, mm. and I'm probably like the worst person to ask about that. <laughs> I have, I I am just, uh, I've never been able to separate it well. Mm-hmm. Um, so my my whole my wife is very forgiving of this. Okay. So I mean, but my my personal life and my social life and my business life all kind of blurs together. I mean, just like this this podcast. Okay. It's all kind of blurred together. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife, Ami, is very forgiving. And, and like when I was practicing this, I, I had her all mic'd up and we were <laughs> drinking wine. And she's like, fine. she's used to it, you know. Nice. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I've never quite gotten that. I'm someone who's just always on. Hmm. Um, but believe me, if I, if I meet someone who's got that, that secret, <laughs> I'll ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work-life balance is so hard. Yeah, right. But, but I think in Japan, that's hard for everyone. Hmm. Even even your, your buddies at NTT were uh-huh. probably going out drinking after work. And yeah, that's true. All day long, you know, you have to, you have to think about after, after work. Yeah. If you work for big companies. <laughs> yeah, right. To manage work-life balance is, is quite hard. Yeah. How long have you been married? Two and a half years. It took you way too long to answer that. We'll we'll edit that down so your wife won't be upset. It'll be just boom. You got that. <laughs> but it's 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 hard. It's it's quite important to to have a supportive wife. I agree. Yeah. To become an entrepreneur. Well, what did what does your wife think of this this entrepreneurship? Mm, she went to the states and studied there, so she's very understandable about. About startups. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think having the, the support is really important. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so if our listeners want to get in touch with you, what's mm-hmm. the best way? Uh, Facebook. Facebook? Okay. And we'll put, we'll put all the links oh, yeah, up sure. on the website. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we're back. Now, Any Door is expanding rapidly and hiring like crazy. So if you want to get in touch with Yamada-san or to see any of the things we talked about during the interview, go to disruptingjapan.com and all that good information is in the show notes. If you've got some comments for us, people you'd like to see on the show, things you think we could do better, let us know at feedback at disruptingjapan.com. And if you do like what we're doing, please write us a good review on iTunes. It's really the absolute best way you can support the show and help us get the word out. I'm Tim Romero. This has been Disrupting Japan. Thanks for listening.